thank you once again for joining us today at matoka tv studio all right um the god servant my father in the lord apostle Aaron osai unveils uh five things that we help every believers to end failure in his life i do wait to pick the point as you listen to it may god almighty bless you amen any problem that you have if you understand priesthood very well if you understand altars very well you can solve it just if you know the sacrifice to offer once you know the sacrifice to offer you can solve any problem whatsoever the wisdom of knowing what sacrifice to offer is the skill behind the altar The practice of priesthood is as powerful, is as powerful as the prescription that you have from God as to how a matter can be dealt with. And there are different kinds of sacrifices. There are financial sacrifices. There are prayer sacrifices. There are, there are um, goodwill sacrifices. Like looking for 20 people in this congregation that are less privileged. And then you ensure that each and every one of them is satisfied. Now let me tell you something. That is what I do. I know the sacrifices to offer. I just say, okay, this problem that I'm in now, I need to relieve 50 people of their pressing needs. So I look for somebody. In fact, as I'm coming out from my place of prayer, people will be coming to me with their needs. From that prayer, that I need to satisfy 50 needy people. They will just start coming, and I'll be meeting. I'll be meeting them, and keeping records. Until the 50th one, then they will stop coming. When the people go, they'll say, Ah, our pastor is a, is a good man. They don't know that. I did not do it because of them. Meanwhile, I'm a good man. <laughs> Just, <laughs> I, I tell you, I'm a good man. <laughs> but it was the Spirit of Christ that led me to do the things I did. The one that was good in that case was not me. It was the Spirit of Christ that was in me. Do you understand that? Yes, I know I'm a good man. But what made me do the things for which they say I'm good? It was the Spirit of Christ that did it. I was in Tanzania. They put me in a hotel close to a beach and I just came out of the back and began to walk on the beach, just praying in tongues. There were people like this, I, I, did, I couldn't see them. And, and I strayed away from the hotel, consumed in the Holy Ghost, consumed, 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 consumed. And then Jesus came and stood by my side. And I told him, I have a concern. He said, what is that? I said, won't you give me the power to, to raise the dead and the power to reverse autism? Do you know autism? You don't know it because it's not here. Oh my God, I went to Europe. Have autistic children everywhere. In fact, one of our members have, has, has three autistic sons. If those of you that study probability, what is the probability that three children from a woman's womb would be autistic? In my own opinion, it cannot be natural. Three children! Oh my God, you need, you need an army to take care of those children. One is going like this, one say, oh, Jesus. That's it. In my, in my own time, the greatest disorder I ever saw that hit my heart and took peace from me was when I saw that devil of autism. In London, I said, all right, let me go pray for the children, the children in the apartment. So I left the pulpit, I went. There were like 50 children there. About 12 of them were autistic. What? I left that place with a prayer point. And when the Lord came, I said, won't you, won't you give me this power? 
How long will I wait? You know what he told me? Send five million to that pastor. I said, I accept. He, you see, you will is by sacrifice. You don't understand it. Sometimes that is, you might dis, decide that you give this financial sacrifice. He said, send five million to that pastor. And then I will raise a cripple. Now, wait, let's analyze that. The, the request is give me the power to raise the dead and the authority to reverse autism. Then he says, send five million to this pastor and I will raise the cripple. Then he left. That was when I discovered I had strayed away from the hotel. So I began to go back and to analyze this answer. Okay, so the five million you said I should give the pastor is the sacrifice. I get that. Uh, how does raising a cripple, <laughs> how does it fit into this? Then it occurred to me that the raising of the cripple would be a sign that he has answered me. So I, I traced my way back. I had two sessions left. The session of that evening, I came with all my might that I will find cripple to raise. No cripple rose that day. So I went back and said, hey, Oga, are you saying, because I've given the five million, are you saying that there was a problem with the seed I sowed? That was why you found fault. And he didn't answer. And when he, when he doesn't answer me, it means I am asking the wrong question. On Sunday night, which was the last night, we, already, we had Sunday service somewhere. I was tired. Then we just came back. We dressed up. Ah! If there was a service... I would have missed. It was that day. I was tired. So I just came and sat somewhere. And then when I came, they were shouting, Woo! and they brought uh, their traditional garment. I began to wear, they, if they know how tired I was, they, they, put, they gave me a uh, shield. They gave me, and then they started dancing that I should come on. So I was doing like this. I do. <laughs> when we finished all of that, then Theophilus began to minister. As Theophilus minister, then the angel just touched me. He touched me here like that. That was a day that the anointing was so strong that I didn't need to preach. And when I cried, five crippled people started walking. <laughs>
Thou art cursed from the earth, which are opened her mouth to receive thy blood as blood out of thy hand. Next verse. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. Do you see that lack of productivity is a product of speaking? So if there's anybody here that is married, a, a, a lady that is trusting God for the fruit of the womb, there's a good night for you because the Bible says that we none shall cast their young. None shall be buried in the land. Productivity is a sign of God's involvement. Fruitfulness is a sign of God's involvement. And anything that comes to stand against that reality, we are going to wage war against it tonight. He said, when thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength, a fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth, a wanderer, a purposeless. When you see somebody that is clueless, that is purposeless, that is just moving around, going around in circles, you know what? Look for a way and, and arrest him. There's something speaking into his life. I saw one gifted man, so gifted, so gifted, so gifted. So I called him. I was trying to help. Meanwhile, it was obvious that his mom had raised an altar over him. And that was the reason why he couldn't stay in one place. So, I asked him, what do you want? He said, once a car. I said, it's done. I said, what else do you want? He said, once like 500,000. I said, it's done. Done? I said, yes, done. Then we went and got the car. Gave him 500,000. That was only enough to keep him seated on one spot for four months. These two things could only keep him down for how many months? After four months, for many years, I've not seen him. Meanwhile, I was led to do what I did. Oh, you are not with me. The curse of a vagabond was upon him. A vagabond is a man that doesn't see the possibility of fulfilling his destiny anywhere on earth. So he's always moving. It's always moving. Ah, stay. Stay in one place. Stay and labor. Don't be afraid of labor. Stay. A fugitive and a vagabond shall that be in the earth. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth. Can you see that? A vagabond has been expelled from the earth. He's, you, you still see him on the earth, but he has been expelled. His destiny cannot be established on any place on the planet. Uh, all right, thank you uh, once again for joining us towards this particular clip by the God's servant, Apostle Arumi Osai, on the reasons um, why some ministers, um, anointed ministers, still be confused in life. And he revealed a shocking secret. And I hope this particular clip really blesses your life so much. So if you do, just click on that red button on the screen and subscribe and like the video and make sure you comment and share it. All right, thank you so much and stay tuned at Matuka TV Studio. Thank you and God bless you.